Personal finance education for primary pupils requires teachers with imagination, specialist knowledge and extensive resources. Or does it? Teachers at Howden Junior School in East Yorkshire managed to introduce their Year 6 pupils to the idea of financial responsibility using one simple technique, delegation. A week in there to help you, but this is your event. They handed over the school disco to the pupils, from booking DJs, through opening a bank account, to accounting for income and expenditure. 90, 100. In short, the teachers handed full financial control of a school event to a class of 10-year-olds, and it worked the most useful way of learning and effective way of learning is hands-on experience and to actually see money coming in is such a valuable way of doing it. The school disco was bookended with a pair of lessons which introduced the pupils to the financial facts of life. It's getting them out of the classroom, it's giving them a real educational experience, so it's something that, to be honest, we really should be doing more of in schools. This programme shows how getting pupils interested in financial responsibility can act as a springboard to learning about personal finance. To accompany this programme, there's a pupil resource programme called Katrina's Big Day Out. It's designed for use in the classroom. It features a year six pupil undertaking a personal finance challenge, planning a family outing, and it can be downloaded from the Teachers TV website. The story starts with a brainstorming session at a school council meeting. OK, what do you need to run a disco? What do you physically need? What do you need us to do? What do you need to do yourself? Go. We need a DJ. It's quite important, isn't it? Next. Dress code. A dress code. I like that. Now, that'll come in with the theme, won't it? The children decide on a themed ball. Now for the finances. They have to list and cost each element of the disco. OK. And there are some tough decisions to make. How much to go in? One pound to go in. You think a pound to get in, so you, so you want to charge on the door and not do tickets? Do you think that's easier? Yeah. Yeah, all right. OK, we can do that. We've got to think about money-wise as well, because we, we're thinking about bread and things for, like, hot dogs. We, we're going to have to pick some money out of that to afford the, the refreshments. And DJ and all and that. Well, yeah. depends who it is. Yeah. The pupils have worked out that they need to know the cost of their outgoings. Time for some research into what DJs might charge. We were hoping to see if you would be available on 9th of March to do a disco. The confident ones have excelled. You know, it, it's their thing. But I think you have to know the children. You can't, you know, go up to any child and say, can you go and phone this person because they'll die a thousand deaths. And how much will that cost? £40. Right. So £40, are you happy with that? Yeah. OK, what does that mean you've got to make? Money. At least £40, because you're talking about food and all sorts here. Yeah. OK, so if you're charging £1 a ticket... Got to have at least 40 people in. They quite like the ownership of it, so from, you know, children on the door, from um, arranging bits and pieces that are happening beforehand, even down to some of them are talking about asking the DJ to play certain songs. They just feel that they can then decorate the hall in their style. Ticket sales will be healthier with a bit of marketing. We need to let people know about this disco. So what's going to do with Mark for now? Is I make posters? Make posters, where are we going to do that? ICT suite. Oh. Do you think? ICT suite? Oh, try yeah. different fonts out, try different yeah. colours. Yeah. I think you need to go to the ICT school. The school has agreed that any profits from the disco can be spent by the children on playground equipment. Awarding them the decision-making power is a useful way of introducing ideas of income and expenditure, key concepts in financial education. The pupils will need somewhere safe for their takings, so they open their own bank account. Hello, we'd like to open a bank account for the school. It's nice that they physically had to go in and do it and they'll be the ones completing the forms um, and I guess they'll be the names on, on the account. Mike Sibley wants to link the real-life learning to the classroom, so he's designed some lessons in the ICT suite 
introducing the children to the idea of spreadsheets and basic accounting. If you sold a hot dog from your shop, it has cost you 40p to produce that hot dog. What do I mean by 40p to produce the hot dog? Yeah. To buy it from the supplies. To buy it from the supplies. What else do you need to do with a hot dog? Yeah. Heat it. Heat it. So the, the 40p has the electricity cost in there. What else? Yes. Storage. The storage, yeah, because hot dogs have to be stored in a refrigerator. So we're paying for the electricity. Put it into an event. It doesn't have to be a grand scale event. It could be something selling bonds at break. But if you give it an event, then there's a purpose to it. Otherwise, it's a little bit difficult for the children to focus. We have found that we've had to simplify some of the ideas to make it accessible. But I think it's given them the starting, which is quite good. If you were catering for our disco next week, these are the items that you can sell. You put in whatever you think the expected sales will be. I'm going with Angus's 70... 76. Now, if you watch carefully, look what happens this time. There are a variety of external resources available to help personal finance education. For example, the educational charity PFEG, the Personal Finance Education Group, offers a range of materials, support and advice to help with lesson planning. Full details can be found on the Teachers TV website. Choose an item. Now, this is a kind of competition because I do want to see who can make the biggest profit. The idea of profit and loss appeals quite a lot to some children. Um, and I think from today's lesson, you could really see the ones who were into it and wanted to make more. And I did feel particularly that they weren't just putting in numbers. You know, I did think they were thinking about it. And when sort of brought up on, well, how can you sell 300 hot dogs? They realized their mistake and brought it down and made it a bit more realistic, which is quite nice. Now, how are we gonna make some money next week? People coming, that's the first one, isn't it? So what we're gonna call it when people come, admission, ticket sales, something in that column to say what you, so either admission or ticket sales in that column. Right, 190 pupils in this school, and 10 of them at least are involved in the setting up. Okay, how many pupils do you think we're gonna get coming to this disco? About half the school. About half. Right, total profit and loss. Now, can we complete this balance sheet today? No. Do we know how many people are coming? No. But what can we do with this? Yeah. We could estimate. What can we do the day after the disco? Take the real things. Take the real things and when we buy the food, and do you think that's what happens in real business? And that's how it works in the real world. It, it does help because there's an end product to it and they're looking forward to that Friday when they're counting their pennies, you know, and then they're saying, right then, but we've got to pay back that amount and that's a, that's a bill, so that's got to be paid. And they're actually looking forward to not only the disco, but the actual day after where they can sit back and sort of see the fruits of their labour. And I guess the ultimate thing is when they put the money in the bank and they get that statement and it says the school council has made and it's there in front of them, and I think that will be sort of like the plenary of the whole thing, which would be quite good. It's the night of the disco. Will the estimates and the reality match up? Something's just gone off. Because we've estimated about 144 people coming, and if, that, like, that not, that, if not that many people come, there's like, oh, it's going to go down the drain. Like. We've got to pay quite a bit for the food and the DJ and things. Uh, so we're hoping to make more than about £100. Pounds. If not enough people turn out, then we're going to um, have to pay it off. The pupils' ideas to make a splash and raise even more money have been flowing freely. They ran a fundraising raffle, with the six winners arriving at the disco by limousine. It was absolutely wonderful. When they got out of the car, you know that shiver that you get down the back of your neck and you're with excitement, and I was close to tears. It was just wonderful watching them getting out of the car. They were so excited, they were so thrilled. And I was thrilled for the children themselves who'd organised it and for the staff who'd also obviously put a tremendous amount of work in. Yet another cash-raising idea from the pupils. Official photographs, with parents charged a pound a print. Right, Jennifer, move to your left. That's lovely. Next one, before you come. After talking to the other pupils about the cost of going, the organisers decided to increase the entrance fee to two pounds, but to include food, keeping down the overall cost to attend. Two pounds, please. Thank you. Thank you. How are ticket sales going? Very good. 
it's really, really exciting to get so much money and we dressed up like we are. The catering side of the operation is running smoothly. The children had decided to keep it simple, serving just pizza and soft drinks. Back on the door, do Alex and Mark think that the event is heading for a profit? In the hall, what you paid? I think we've raised at least two hundred pounds now. We've taken much more than I thought we would, and there's loads and loads of people here, which is very good. If you win, you win one of these. If you don't, you get a happy sweet. Do you want to go? I think it's going very well at the moment, and I think we're definitely going to. Um, they're definitely going to make some money, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Um, I think they're going to make a lot of money, uh, judging by the amount of people who want photographs, and some children are in full photographs, so that might be parents buying more than one photograph. Teachers stay in the background, in overall charge of collecting takings. One of each. Yes, please, yeah. Thank you very much. The morning after the night before, it's time for the final reckoning. The pupils who took the lead at the event get a preview of the results. Their classmates will be told later. 80, 100. This is just door and raffle, remember? Yeah. So what's it roughly going to be? Um, I'm estimating 300 pounds. OK. 9, 10, 4. We've got a total? 589 pounds, 32. OK, now is that all profit? No. The organisers can't wait to fill in the spreadsheet to calculate the results. The completed spreadsheet will be shown to the rest of the class later. Pizzas, £7.78. Garlic bread, 1950. Sweets for the tombola, 25.72. Balloons, 13.62. So in total, your output was 127 pounds 58. You've made 461 pounds 74 pence. I think you've probably just about done okay, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Are you pleased with yourselves? Yeah. Children learn in many different ways, but the most useful way of learning and effective way of learning is hands-on experience. And to actually see money coming in is such a valuable way of doing it. And if you did it in the, in the classroom, well, let's pretend that it's obviously not as effective as actually doing it. So those children who have gone from the very beginning to counting the money earlier on today, the learning that they got from that is tremendous. And it's theirs, the money is theirs. We're not going to tell them what to do with it. They can decide exactly what to do with it. 461 pounds, that is fantastic. Let me shake your hands, absolutely wonderful. And that's all due to your hard work. Don't forget that there's a pupil resource programme called Katrina's Big Day Out to accompany this programme. And ideas to help you plan lessons on personal finance education on the Teachers TV website.